Okay, mom. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're back. We're back. We're actually really back. We part do two. that. Part two. We still been sitting here. We yeah. just, it went on, so we we decided to record a part two. Two. Part two. Welcome. Two. Welcome. Welcome part back to another episode of Okay Mom okay, Podcast. Mom. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for all of the love and appreciation on the getting to know us video. Um, you guys have asked for it and we've got a huge list of like questions that we want to, um, respond to, um, before we begin the episode, please pause. Did you subscribe? Did you like? Did you comment? Did you five star us? Ooh, ooh, <laughs> I love this. Five star us. <laughs> So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and please follow us and give us those five stars on Spotify. We really, really appreciate it. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And those of you who have, who have sent us questions, you should feel very special because we are going to now read those. Yes. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And there's also some questions that we might not be able to get to. Yeah. Because like we, I think we try to be quick, but then it's also like sometimes the story is just, you know, we just start with the stories. Okay. Tangent after tangent after after tangent. tangent. (laughs) So if we don't get to it, we will eventually get to it. It, yeah. Don't you worry, okay? Yeah. All right. Who's I got starting? a great one. I got a great one. Um, the question was, what color would you describe yourself and why? Okay. I would describe myself as the color purple, my favorite color. Ooh. Okay. Well, first of all, it's my favorite color. I'll tell you why. Because when I was younger, in my class in grade three, I always noticed that like the purple marker was the only marker that would work and the other markers would not work. So it was either purple or brown. Okay. I just loved the color. It was so vibrant. And yeah. so I was I was like, this is my jam. This is my color. So I feel like the, the color, I, I have trust in the color. Yeah. <laughs> I trust it. It hasn't let me down. It's also like very bright and fun. And I feel like that's kind of like me. Yo, that marker did not let you down. That ink was always there. That ink was always there. I love that. I love yeah. that. Um, I think for me, it's gotta be green. Ooh, you I know what? Green. I actually love green on you. I love. It's uh, my absolute favorite color, and it, it has to be like not so much this shade. This is a little bit more like I love that deep forest green. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's my favorite. And I feel like maybe I would say that because generally speaking, I feel like it gives off a very like calm, neutral, Mm -hmm. nature-esque vibe. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome (laughs) to the panel. Um, And I just, I love it. It brings me like just joy and peace. I love that. And I like that it's not, it it can be a vibrant green, but I prefer the kind of like neutral, subtle. I also think it's like nature is green. Yeah. It's very calming. It is very calming. Like, you know, people say like, if you have an anxious mind, like go outside, be outdoors. Yeah. You know? So I think that it's very helpful. And it's one of those things where I feel like no matter what item it is, if it's in green, I want it. I love that. And I want it in green. I love that. So I like that. That's a great idea. That's like a great color to pick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, ooh, this is a good one. Okay. What do you consider to be your superpower? My superpower? Understanding how to fold fitted sheets. God damn. Even I don't know that. <laughs> I feel like that's my mom flex. Teach me. <laughs> that's a real mom flex. Like the minute I became a mom and I started like, by the way, again, like unconventional, but husband and wife role, like I actually don't do the laundry in the house. Good for you. I'm like, no. It's one of the chores that I detest. Yeah, I detest okay? it too. I don't know what it is. I just feel like you throw it in the machine and it's fine. But then afterwards... The ap- it is the after. It's not the throwing in the machine. That's the easy part. Because you're just like, roll, <laughs> toss, roll, toss. Okay? It's the after when you got to take the toss shit out. And then you're just looking at a pile of junk and you're like, I have to put this away? And sometimes you're like, do I iron this? <laughs> Do I, do I take the initiative and iron? Cause I know I'm going to have to iron it eventually, but then you're like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to wear the wrinkly clothes. When I first got married and I've said this to you and I've said this to you guys, how I wore shalvar kameez a lot. Yes. So one time I wore shalvar kameez and this was like really early in our, in our like marriage days or whatever. And I didn't know, I never did laundry at my mom's house. Mm -hmm. When I was like single and living with my parents, I never did the laundry. I just Mm -hmm. tossed it in a thing and my mom did the laundry. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was doing the, I was like, all right, I'm a wife now. I got to do wifey. (laughs) Naive Arouj didn't even know how to use the laundry machine. Okay. And it was one of those stacked ones. Oh. So I tossed all of like the, whatever was in the whites. Oh my gosh. With 
this yellow shalwar kameez. Oh, that I had. Lord. And I ran the cycle. I was like, all right, cool. Look Nothing was white again. <laughs> hey, look at me doing the laundry, okay? Fahan comes home. He takes the laundry off. He's like, what is this? Why are there yellow pea stains on everything? <laughs> oh my God. I was so embarrassed. Oh my God. Because I was like, he's probably expecting it. Like, oh my God, I'm going to go home. My wife yes. is doing the laundry. And I'm like, obviously boasting myself to him. I was like, oh, guess some wifey duties. You know, I'm dying. Yeah. And, and he comes over. Like, this is the laundry. Wifey is an amateur. <laughs> That's like, hilarious. Takiwi shalwarkamis and your takiwi laundry skills, okay? I don't need any of this. <laughs> and then he's like, from this day forward, I will take on this role. You focus on the other things, wife, okay? And here's another thing about Farhan. Like, he used to work at, um, like, in retail. Yeah. And he's, ex and I never knew this about him, but he's extremely particular about his laundry. And, like, how you fold it? How you fold it. So, like, he used to have that, you know how you have the thing in retail? Oh, and my then, God, I love that. That thing that- I want that. That full- I love that thing. I watch. Sometimes I stand there and I watch them like do it again. Yeah, and then like he knows how to crease it, and he's a very like visual person. And I, I always say like, can you just play the game of Tetris? Yeah, and really organize things in a small condensed yeah. space and fold it in a way to make things yeah. work. And so when he saw me, I was just, I was just <laughs> things everywhere. I had a pile in the corner of the bedroom that was like my pile of clothes because everyone knows the pile. Everyone has. The pile. It's like that I'll get to it eventually pile. That pile is not allowed. Uh, that that pile, pile is that not That pile was forever yeah. forever young in my house. Yeah. <laughs> that pile's like, oh, you still there today? See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those piles. And so when I got married, I was like, and I never like I just always toss everything into the washing machine. Yeah. I was like, no, 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 this is my good stuff. This needs to be hanged to dry. And I was like, what is a hang to dry? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, there is a this real is a thing. technique. This is a thing. It's a real thing, guys. And also, you know, you're like workout clothes. Like you can't always throw them in the dryer. Like you got to, you actually have to read the tags. They're not for show. Yeah. I used to think they were for show. <laughs> like this is a cold wash. This is a do not dry. This is a tumble dry. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, y'all chill. Tumble dry is bookwas. Okay. I don't even know what a tumble dry is. <laughs> is it just a dry? <laughs> okay. But what I do know is you don't mix colors and whites I, i'll give myself that much i did not know that i'll give myself that much i did okay? not know that there are guys rookie mistakes i have rookie so mistake. many rookie it's mistakes okay. it's okay we, I, we believe me at the beginning we all had them we all had them <laughs> yo i don't even know how long to boil an egg for <laughs> you're just doing your own bestie okay like I literally was like, if you guys should take an hour. Yo, if I ever die and anybody goes through my Google search, y'all are like, what is this girl on? That's what we should do. We should be like, what was her last Google search? <laughs> and I remember when I got married, I was like, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll have a hard bowl. I have a good egg in the morning. <laughs> Can't even say the story. <laughs> I literally Googled, how long do you want <laughs> And let me tell you, Google was like, a girl, it depends on your damn stove. If Google I thought back to me, it would have my fisty right then and there. I thought Google was going to be like, dot, dot, dot. Are you serious? <laughs> like, no, girl, are you kidding me? Are you serious right now? You well, how old are you again? I'm just glad you didn't ask your mom that because she'd be like, Guess what? I did ask my mom. What did she I say? I called her. I was like, Ma, how long do I boil this for? She was like, first of all, she did the shakes my head. Yeah. Okay. And I could hear it through the phone. I could hear it through the phone. Okay. And then she goes, obviously, as a typical Desi Pakistani mom, she was like, Beta, you'll just know. <laughs> you'll just know. And I'm like, how? And then I was like, do I, do I shake it? Do I hear the yolk? How do I know? How do I know? And the amount of eggs that I did not boil. Oh my gosh. You know when you're like, I think it's done and you take it out and it's still runny and you're like, this is something. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to eat this nasty mucusy thing floating around. <laughs> I don't want to eat that shit. No, thank you. It's like when people are like sunny side up and I'm like, hell nah. Not in this house. We don't do that. We fully cook. We gotta cook things through here, okay? We have enough of that that yeah. mucus in our salon. No, 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 no. I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that. It's so funny. Welcome so funny. to Tangents on Okimon Podcast. 
This is this is one for the books. This is one for the books. Books. Okay. Wait, did you answer the? What was it? <laughs> I'm like, wait, what was the question? <laughs> oh, what do you consider to be your superpower? Oh, what? Oh, okay. Well, what, what did you even say? <laughs> what was your answer? <laughs> You do have an answer. I actually don't remember. You I said don't. you can fold the fitted bench. Oh, that's my mom flex. Oh, that's oh my god. Flex. Let me bring it back. Okay, let me bring, bring it, back. it back. Okay. Reel it in. <laughs> Reel it in, guys. <laughs> I feel like this is gonna be one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> Let me reel it back in. So my greatest <laughs> mom flex is obviously living with Farhan. He's taught me a lot of things about how to fold and like yeah. how to do laundry appropriately. Yeah. Okay. So I don't make rookie mistakes anymore. Um, is actually like learning to fold a fitted sheet. I don't know what I do. That's it's a flex. One of those. That's a flex. But this, oh my God. It, I just, you just fold it up like a sandwich and you put it out there and it's all neatly aligned. I love that. That just, you just saying that is making my heart happy. Yeah. My my What's biggest yours? superpower is um I don't know I think I have a few but like I think one of them is that I'm extremely organized. You are very organized. Like kitchen. even if have there's like the kitchen? her pantry today maybe not so. No. But the pantry is the pantry is legit. It's organized. But I really like things like in order in some areas of the house. The laundry pile though don't I I ain't organized with that. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay. Um, but yeah, not even organized, like, as in, like, how things look, but I think even when, like, I have an event to plan, like, I'm always like, okay, this is the task mm -hmm. I need to get done, and then I, like, plan my day really well. It's not always a good thing, because I feel like there's a, there's, like, a, other, other problems with that, like, you become too much a perfect, of a perfectionist, mm -hmm. but I think the other thing, a little bit more on, like, the emotional spectrum, I would say, is that I feel like I have a lot of compassion for people. You like, do. I feel like, I feel like if somebody tells me something about them, like, I am like feeling it with you Aww. okay like for me I'm like I just don't I don't want this for you or like I want you to like be happy and like it'll, I'll think about it like, yeah. like if you told me like you're sad about something I, I will think about that on my drive home like yeah. I'll be like what is happening to her like how do we fix this and like it will really like impact me so I feel like I, I used to think like even now sometimes I'm like it's a bit it's a lot mm -hmm. emotionally it's a lot even for me to handle sometimes mm -hmm. but I actually think in other aspects it is a superpower because you're able to feel like other people's feelings and like mm -hmm. be there for them. And I hope I'm not just bragging about this. I hope people think this about me too, but this is what I think. No, it's true. And Hina like really loves to check in. So do you though. Yeah, but no, you're really good at it. Like I feel like sometimes I'll forget and stuff, but I know Hina will like, you do. And it's I great. I appreciate that. She really like will check in on you and just be like, hey, I just want to check in. Hey, what's up? Hey, are you doing yeah. well? Like what's going on? And it's great. It is, your answer was, uh, a plus plus is <laughs> like, but I'm not gonna lie, a girl still can't fold a fit. Yeah, please. I can't. I'm sending them to her. I'm sending them to her. Do you guys gossip after a party or a shadi? You know, usko deka, usko deka, that kind of a vibe. Do you guys do it or no? Well, I don't think we've really been to a lot of weddings no. or parties together. No. We did have a really bad experience at a restaurant, and we were both like. What is this shit? Oh, what what a is a waste this? of a night? Waste of a night. It was I'm horrible. So upset. I think we were all really upset. Mm -hmm. Definitely left them a bad review, which mm -hmm. they deserved. Mm -hmm. Um so I mean it's that, but I don't think I don't think like I'm the type that like if I go to a wedding, I'm just like I don't know, man. Like, you know, I feel like the gossip thing for me is very tricky. Like, I think everyone gossips. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it it's like something that I do where I'm like Oh my god, guys, like I need to sit down with you and gossip right now and like have a gossip session. Yeah. I know people that do that, and so I feel like I'm not that type. Yeah. But like sometimes, you know, if someone brings something up, I'll be like, oh, did that really happen? Like, oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. But it's not something that I'm like, it does not give me like uh like I don't need it in my life. Mm -hmm. You know how some people need it? Yeah. I think I try to avoid it. Yeah. Cause it makes me feel really guilty after that. Like, why am I like why did I even get involved in that? Mm -hmm. Why did I say something? Or why did I you just feel like you're not being a good person. I, I know like even in like our religion, it's like all about like the don't like talk. I mean, not I'm not really but just in human kind in general, yeah. like don't backbite, like don't be that person. So I feel like I try the older you get, the more you're like, check yourself. Yeah. Don't be that way. And I also think I'm at the point in my life where like I don't like to surround myself with people like that because I think if they 
can do it with you constantly than they're doing it about you. Right, right, right. So I'm very Ooh, careful like with that. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I'm I'm that type. I think I'll go to the wedding, I'll have a good time, and I'm going home. Mm. But that's it. That's mm. that's the deal. What about you? <laughs> Honestly, I feel like growing up, it was kind of like a thing that you would do. Like when yeah. you're in high school, you'd be like, oh, did you hear? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, but I just feel like, I don't know, with age, I just don't have time. You don't have the time. And I can't be bothered. Yeah, I feel like people that do that stuff, they're really. Huh. Really, like huh. you got mad time on your hands. When you're busy, when you have things going, you don't have the capacity to be like, let me sit here and talk about like my neighbor's neighbor or like, yeah. oh, gotta, gotta throw this in about my cousin. Like, I don't have that energy. Yeah. I don't have the time. And I feel like, honestly, if I do ever sit down and like meet friends or like when we get together or whatever, yeah. I just talk shit about myself. <laughs> Like guys, I think people think that me and you sit here and we're like, "Did you hear?" Not at all. We're more like, "Do you know what happened to me?" This literally, morning? it's literally like I walk in and I'm like, "Let me tell you what just went down today." Honestly, like, my the week that we like it's like stuff like the that. week that we've had, or like kid stories, yeah, or like even mistakes that we make. I feel like yeah. I just I've been grow I've been learning and just doing a lot of self reflecting, and that's what comes across in conversation. I think so too. A lot of our conversations are very much growth based. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's like he said, she yeah, said. Yeah, I think it sounds so like, wow, look at these guys. Like, they're saying all the, but I'm not kidding. Yeah. We talk a lot about like individual growth as a person, yeah. like what we're doing. Like, you know, you talk a lot about like your school and like your master's program and stuff like that. Um, and you also talk about just like, you know, the mundane things in life. Yeah. You know? It's it's just certain things that we both will kind of like gravitate towards more. And we also talk a lot about like our podcast and like, how can we yeah. improve it? What can we do? This and that. That's usually most of our conversation. Yeah. Not usually, it's not like, a gossip thing nah no it's not i feel like you guys would probably sit with us and be like that's it that's, it. <laughs> that's all you guys do <laughs> guys literally what you guys hear on the podcast is how we are it's not anything more or less if it's you really ever meet us in public yeah you're gonna be like yo i feel like i'm having an same. episode with you guys but i feel like i'd be like oh my god <laughs> Like, I mean, yeah. of course we would do that. Of yeah, like, I don't that. think it's, like, the type that's, like, I'm so much better than, like, oh, oh God, no, I no, 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 no. I would never. It's that's an that's an egg. egg. That's an egg. All right, another question. Simple and easy. What's our age group? Well, guys, you know, in my heart, your girl is 19. Oh, I love that. I was 19. In reality, I'm 36. So All right. That's what it is. In my heart, I'm forever 21. Love the age. I'm actually 33. Gonna turn 34 this year. Let me Ooh. say, guys, the thirties are actually like they're it's not like, bad. Actually, they're wise years. They you are. I mean, you learn a lot in your thirties. I mean, physically, we're deteriorating. <laughs> Deterioration is at an all time high. Okay, like the 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 little cracks you feel, like you're getting up and you're like, whoa, oh, that was an ankle. Yeah. Or sometimes, <laughs> honestly, I'm like, if I sleep weird and I wake up with that shoulder pain, or like the the neck, you're like, oh. I can't move my neck. I can't move my neck. <laughs> you're literally you're like. <laughs> Another question is, what is your biggest fear and is it connected to some past trauma? Whoa. That's a good one. That's a great one. Yeah. Um, my biggest fear, I think, is now, I would say, is if I feel like I'm not living my life the way I want to live it. I love that. I mean, I love that you acknowledge it. Yeah. Not that you're scared. No, <laughs> no I really feel like, I really feel like I'm just scared, especially now. Yeah. I feel like I'm so scared. Like, had I not applied to do my master's, I would have just lived in this whole, like, I, I don't want to live in regret. Yo. Who wants to live in regret? Can I tell you that? What you just said. You know? That is so true. Yeah. Because, like, how many times have you looked back and been like, I regret this? <sighs> And I can't take it back. Honestly. Like, no matter what I do, I can't take it back. And it's not just about life decisions, too. It could be, like, a little shopping error. Yeah, totally. You know, it could be like, oh, had I just in given another 50 bucks, I could have gotten a better quality of something. Totally. totally. For example, yeah. right? And then you're just sitting there being like, just sitting in that regret. Mm -hmm. That is a fear of mine. That's why everybody says, like, regret weighs a ton. It does. Regret weighs a ton. So, like, follow follow what your heart tells yeah. you. Yeah. Sounds cliche, but I feel like, really, like, inside your gut, you you know yeah you need to take in life and i think that's a fear of mine where i just i don't want to live in regret so if i have a thought or a fire or something has been ignited i'm rolling with it we'll just see where it goes i love that you know like i love that you have you've noticed that about yourself yeah. and you're like i'm gonna change the way that like i think on things i'm gonna put myself first yeah like it's very inspiring really left alone with your thoughts and regrets mm -hmm. like just ask yourself is that really what you want to sit with? Wow. Are you okay sitting in that? Yeah, that's so true. And if you're not, and you know okay. it, 
try and do something to get yourself out of it. Oh my God, that's so true. That's so, so true. And I think it's, it rings so true to me too, because I feel like I'm learning that this year. Right? Like even last year and this year, I think that is, has been like the self-realization for me. Yeah. That like do things for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't like, cause like the regret when I tell you guys, the regret eats you alive. Yeah. And so I feel like, if there's things in the past that you're like, I can't change it. Mm -hmm. I can't change that. You can't, of course. Moving forward, you can change that. Yeah. You control that, right? And so like, it's not like you're like micromanaging, but like you do the best you can to like, make sure you pick yourself this time around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, I love that. I just feel like I, I really resonate with that. I think that's a fear of mine too, that like, um, I'm not going to be authentic to myself because I feel like a, a large portion of my life was basically like living for other people, For sure, living to make your parents happy, living to make everybody else around you happy, not ruffling feathers. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that you sell yourself so short, right? You sell yourself so short. You don't give yourself opportunities. You don't. And like, it's your mindset. And sometimes it's like you, you tell somebody like, as an example, I would say like, you know, sometimes like if you tell somebody about like, let's say even this podcast, I tell somebody like, oh guys, I'm starting a podcast and I have this expectation that they're going to be like, yes, amazing idea. Yeah. But then what if they don't? What if they're like, nah, I don't know if that's a really good idea. Like mm -hmm. you really think you're going to do well with that? Because everyone doesn't have the same mindset as you and yeah. they bring you down. The old me would be like, oh, that's not a good idea. I guess I won't do it. The new me is like, watch me. Why? Right? Watch me do it. Ooh. Because, get it like, girl you know your fire mm -hmm. right you know what you're capable of that's that's definitely i have a similar fear with that i think another one of my fears is definitely related to like health yeah and i think a lot of that is because of like my dad so my dad passed away from cancer and i think like that has had like a really profound impact i think grief is such a weird thing to process mm. and i think that's always been one of my fears when you grow older you know your parents are growing older and so it's always like this fear that like if you, for example, like when you don't have a loss like that in your life, you don't always necessarily think about it that deeply mm -hmm. because for some reason you think your parents are going to be there forever. Yeah. You really do. You do. And then when they're not there and like something tragic happens, then you're just like, what? Like it changes the entire, like it changes your life in the weirdest way. Mm -hmm. So I think one of my biggest fears is always like health wise. I just want everybody around me to always be healthy. And like, oh, yeah. you know, just want to always be like, um, like promoting that, like take care of yourself, um, you know, eat well, work out, do whatever you can that's in your control. The rest is not up to you. So that's a fear. And obviously that is related to past trauma. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I think, um, it's a valid fear. And I think a lot of people have that fear, yeah. you know, the older you get, you have those types of fears. Yeah. So also thanks for sharing that. Thanks. Because I know it's, it's really tough. It and is really tough. Yeah. Like you said, grief is hard and I have never experienced that kind of a loss. Yet. Honestly, I hope you never do, you know, but Again, that's also a fear because, and I think the, uh, it's not, I, I don't have that much like health anxiety or fear yeah. that you do. Um, but I feel like, yeah, the fear of your parents getting older, yo, that, real fear. that hits deep. Yeah. Cause you know, like you genuinely do think that they're going to live forever. I know you do. You do. And then sometimes it's like growing up, you always saw them as this rock in your life. Right. And then when you start to see some cracks in the rock, Yo. it breaks you. Cause now you're the parents. Yeah. And it's almost like, it's almost like that Benjamin button effect where it's yeah. like, you know, you, you like, as they grow older, you know, everyone knows that when you become elderly, you have more like those childlike qualities where yeah. like, you know, you get irritated quickly. You need people to take care of you yeah. where you were once like so independent and did everything yourself. And like, I've seen it with my grandparents too. And like, um, you know, everyone ages and everyone goes through that process. It's hard. It's very hard, you know? So I just, I think like the moral of the story is love your parents. Honestly, okay? Love them. They honestly. have done a lot. I mean, for the non-toxic ones, yeah. <laughs> if they're toxic, we can just say, pray for them. <laughs> Okay, do you want to pick some of those questions? Yeah, let's do this one. I have this one. It's a okay. self-awareness starts with self-reflection. Damn, we've been doing a lot of that so today. Here's questions right here. Woo. This Are is part ready? of the expansion pack. Um, and it says self-awareness starts with self-reflection. So I'm going to pick a card oh, I love oh, cards me too. Okay, let's see. What insecurity has been holding you back the most? Oh, I like this. This is the easiest answer. Okay. I think you touched on this in our first episode. Mm -hmm. It's definitely like loving yourself. Yeah. That's held me back a lot because I think, um, 
it kind of correlates with like like no like knowing how to respect yourself knowing yeah. what your self-worth is mm -hmm. all that kind of comes into play because i feel like a lot of the times you have to be selfless and like try to make other people happy i've learned this in the hardest ways guys you don't even know mm -hmm. um and like you i think you, we grow up and we try to do a lot of things to make other people happy and we really do forget about ourselves because yeah. i think our parents have also done those things where they don't think about themselves and they're very like you know, like, they're very, like, I want to make everybody else around me happy. So we've grown up like that. And sometimes when you do do something for yourself, you feel very selfish. Yeah. If you do something where, like, your parents are not necessarily, like, gung-ho that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And they express it to you and they're like, why did you do this? Mm -hmm. And you did something for yourself. You feel so shitty. Like, you're Honestly. like, why did I upset my mom and dad? You know, like, you do that a lot. But, um... That has held me back so much in every way. Oh. Career education mm -hmm. um you know like life major life decisions it's held me back a lot i think if i had had a lot more of that love for myself and a lot more confidence in myself i know i could have made the right decisions and even if i didn't i could have still said okay i made a mistake let's pivot and do something else i learned from it but i think now i'm learning it and uh i still say you know like i can't change the past but i can change who i am in this present moment and yeah. try to be the best version of myself right now and hopefully instill those values in my kids mm -hmm from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely something that held me back. I love that. Yeah. What about that's you? True. Um, I feel like for me, um, because I was always taught to be on this like straight path that I've mentioned before. Yeah. Me wanting to do things that are a little bit outside of that. Mm -hmm outside of like your normal nine to five i'm totally. putting it in quotes because yeah. like what really is a nine to five mm -hmm. um that really has held me back yeah because had i felt like and you know how we mentioned in a, a few episodes ago where we were talking about how like there's so much talent in the south so Asian much talent they see south Asian yeah. community here yeah um and i feel like we always hold back we do because we're like oh this is not really a career that people yeah say that you should be pursuing you know yeah. like what am i gonna tell my mom that i make youtube videos right <laughs> like how are they even gonna understand what i'm yeah. doing yeah. right and so i feel like a lot of that that stigma and that kind of like negative negativity in terms of certain careers yeah has held me back because like i said i was really into like event planning or whatever yeah. i was like you know if i decide to do that then what if my parents are just like what are you doing with your life yeah and they're just kind of like oh you just she plans weddings yeah and you kind of say it in that way where it's not really seen as like a respectful career. Yeah. I know Again, putting it in quotes. I know what you mean. Right? So I feel like that kind of stuff has really held me back. Um, now I'm kind of like, I don't care. Like, yeah. Full forward, we're going to do what yeah. we're going to do. Totally. But yeah, I feel like that's definitely something that's just trying to okay. be on this like straight second gen immigrate yeah. immigrate like immigration immigration immigrant parent path yeah where i feel like that's just kind of like the path that has like no forks on the road to yeah like, like you're like now nah, we gotta walk the straight path yeah and it's i like, get that i, I get that be on the straight path yeah sometimes it's good to like be a risk taker yeah yeah okay something that you need to get off your chest right now go oh my god oh putting you on the spot Ooh. Let me think about this. Um, something I have to get off my chest right on the spot. I am so excited to drive back because my drive is going to be all the bumping desi music. Yeah. I'm just going to be jamming in my car. I'm so, so I'm excited about that. I love that. Yeah. And my sister's coming over tomorrow. I'm making some biryani. I'm excited about Ooh. that. Uh, I about that yeah. girl host for the most yes let's uh, go what about you let's go something i need to get off my chest is i'm so sick of this damn season oh look i know oh. born and raised in canada guys i get it everyone's like oh it's so pretty look at all the snow who, that? who the hell says people that say that people say let's go skiing let's go to like blue mountain i'm sick of it yeah i'm sick of this weather i'm, I'm getting this off my chest and i'm honestly really 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 exhausted from kids being sick oh my gosh girl you're saying everything that i feel this flu season this flu season it's been exponentially worse it than any other year i have experienced so bad and like these viruses ain't normal they're like mutations of like mutations honestly i've never experienced, experienced viruses like this antibiotics inhalers like it's crazy you name it like my kids have been on all of it and they're like literally not even five years old it's a lot no it's this lot. even last year was a lot too but like this year Ugh. 
the way that and it's also like your kids are in like school like preschool montessori all that they bring god knows what they're bringing home honestly okay? and it's just like every day it's like the anxiety of your get, kids getting sick you're checking their temperature every 10 mm -hmm. minutes like has it gone down has a fever gone down oh are they god. okay are they having a good night it's it is wild fevers scare me a lot fevers scare the living daylights out me, of me. too it's like so the way i'm on up. the clock with that advil tylenol mm -hmm. rotation on the kids i know oh, it's, man. it's scary it's like on the clock like i will wake up every four hours to make sure that wow that's, that's, it's it's really really scary it's yeah. really scary it's that scares stuff. me and like oh, you know just like vomiting and yeah. then at 2 a.m i'm washing bed sheets oh i'm tired Lord. i'm tired of give this. this mom a, give all the moms a break god. spring needs to come spring needs to come did the groundhog see his shadow <laughs> for the love of god where the hell is that boy where is that damn groundhog where is he let's What's go get out we we'll need an early spring whatever the hell his what? name is what is it i don't know wyerton willie that's his name i don't know wilfred where are you at will <laughs> bring it out will bring spring see yo shadow <laughs> Since we're on the topic of self-love, Hina, I want you to tell me three things that you love about yourself. Ooh, sister. I like this one. Okay, first thing is, I feel like I'm a very ride-or-die personality for the people I love. Duffs. I honestly am. Like, I honestly think if my sister called me this second and said... I really need you. Can you come? I'd be like, sorry, Rooch, gotta gotta leave. So, and I'll I be would. like, you go. And I know you would. I know you would do that. And I think if you ever said to me like, hey, Hannah, like I really need this. If anybody really asked me, they're like, yo, I really need this from you. I would do my darndest mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I feel like that. That's one of the things I. I think I'm very ride or die. Second thing is like, if I love you. I love you. Aww. Okay, like I love you. Yeah. I will show you all the love. Yeah. Okay. That goes with my siblings. That goes with my friends. That goes with like so many people in my life. Mm -hmm. Like where I will always try to be like a very loving friend. I'll try my best. I have flaws, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But like I will honestly show you as much love as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. That's just who I am. Mm -hmm. Third thing is I feel like I would love your kids like my own. Honestly, I would. You, she does. Like, when I say that, like, it's not just, like, upar upar se, it's not surface level. Yeah. It's actually very genuine. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is about little kids. Like, I don't get... Before I had kids, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I would be like, I can see myself being like annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. I have kids now, and like, I see other kids. I don't care whose kid it is. Yeah. I don't get annoyed. I don't get annoyed with them. Like, I love that. I'm not a teacher, so maybe I can say that because I know that I'm not teaching these kids anything. <laughs> but like, fun and is like the best thing I could ever be. Yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah. It makes me happy to like. Because I just feel like, you know, when I was young, I always wanted to have, like, fun people in my life. So it takes me back a lot. Aww. So I feel like when I see other kids, like, they get so excited sometimes. And you're just like, I just want you to have, like, a magical moment. Like, yeah. even if it's for, like, a few minutes, like, it's just, like, nice. Like, they're, like, and they're so innocent. And they're so, like, in their own world. Like, everything is so amazing. And yeah. they get so excited by the smallest things. Yeah. So I think I, I think I love them just like I, like, I would hope that I can show them just as much love as I would show my kids. I think that's... My kids had a 20-minute interaction with her. Oh my god, I love her kid. And since then, they're amazing. Mama, is Hina Khala coming? Oh. Mama, when is Hina Khala coming? I knew I liked them when they said that. Oh my god, they're, they're I love it. I love it. And it makes they're me so it cute. Make, brings me so much joy because it's it's truly coming from them from a place of like they are bringing they are just saying it wholeheartedly from themselves. I, you know, I feel like they're they're such good kids. Because the kids don't fake it. No. Kids don't fake it. <laughs> don't fake it. That's the truth. And they just I think like kids in general, they just want to have somebody to play with that's different from their parents. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's always exciting for them. So that's love my that. three. What's love your that. three sister? Three things that I love about myself. Um I'm just gonna talk about like random stuff. It, Do those, it. those were deep and great and I love that. <laughs> One, I actually, um, I love that I forced, not forced, but I am on this journey of like self-discovery and like back to school. I, I feel like I can like feel my brain just expanding. Yeah. I love it. I feel like I'm learning a lot of things and I'm um, questioning a lot of the way that we've learned how things are so institutionalized all the time Yeah, and where it has stemmed from and like how we can break from it. And I'm loving this journey. Um, two, I'm actually loving that I can see myself not only being te a teacher for the rest of my life. Yeah. I love that about myself. I love that too. Because for a number of years, I was like, oh this God, I'm, gonna, I'm literally going to retire as a teacher. Yeah, totally. And now I'm like, I don't want to retire as a teacher. Wow. It's, it's exciting. It's like, yeah. it's nice to see yourself in a different light. Totally. Right? Yeah. To see yourself do something else. That's so true. Um, and three, 
Y'all, I love that I know how to run a kitchen. I'm just gonna. She does. When I say I come here and she's always like, do you want this? Can I make you this? Let me make you a cup of chat. Let me do this for you. Uh, I made food. Do you want this? Do you want? Right now, like five minutes ago. Uh, so I made these really yummy alu tikkis. Do you want some? And I was just like, Dilo, I was like, I kind of do, but I'm like, I need to calm down because I just ate a full meal. And it's not like the nasty alu tikkis. You know they're going to be good. You know they're going to be good. Yo, I pride myself in like, I know how to run a kitchen. I, I enjoy no doing it. I think that's what it is. It's not a chore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Laundry, chore. Yeah. Doing the vacuum, chore. chore. Oh. I absolutely hate it. I know some people love it because I feel I, like they get like instant gratification from like running a vacuum and it's like a clean Partially, space. but no, not really. <laughs> but I don't. It's one of the chores that I despise. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you want me to run a kitchen? You want me to wash the dishes? You I guys, do it. You should see her spice thing. Like it is oh. cool. You got to share it one day. I will, I will. It's such a vibe. It's such a vibe. I love it. I love so, it. Yeah. Those are you know, things. I have to say though, like you were talking about like your first two things about how you're like pursuing something and you like, you know you were saying like oh i might you know i don't necessarily think i'm gonna retire as a teacher i feel like from when you started i've seen a shift in you right i swear to god like i feel like back in the day you were a lot quieter mm. like you didn't really like say things you yeah didn't, like share opinions but like now you are way more confident yeah like you're different yeah. good different good different not gonna lie yeah this is i love it so too. like in deep and sentimental i know i love it i love it i feel it too i feel it in myself and i feel yeah. like i just i i see myself growing as like a mom as a teacher as yeah. an educator as a student yeah you know and i see and i'm just like i feel like you know when they say kids are just a sponge yeah i feel like i'm a sponge but now i'm a sponge with a voice yeah so yeah yes. i'll take it all in yeah but you know if i disagree with you i'm gonna let you know i disagree with you yeah, yeah. and, it's and okay. i think it's you healthy let people know it's healthy yeah. i think like a lot of that ha has happened in the past too where we we don't say things because we're like if I say this, then the other person is going to get offended, you know? Mm -hmm. But then sometimes it's like, no, like if the other person is going to get offended by an opinion, then they're not mature enough to have a conversation. True. And like at this age, you know, it's like we can have disagreements. We don't have to agree on the same thing. Like we can be adults and have a conversation right. about it, you know? Like even with us. Yeah. Sometimes when we're discussing things, you're like, I think of it this way. And I'm like, mm, I think of it this way. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, cool. We think yeah. of it a different way. It is what it is. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And then you like come back to it. It's yeah. never like, I I hate you for thinking of it this way. It's just different. I love it's that. It's different. I love that too. What was something mean that was said to you when you in your childhood that you carry to this day? Oh man. This is a deep one. Um oh man, that is a deep one. Right? I'm trying to think. You know what? Actually, I can talk about this. Okay, go. I feel like when I was when I was young, I was in grade two and mm -hmm. I got bullied really badly. Like so badly that so even sad. till this day. I still remember it. Okay. It was really bad, guys. And um, I feel like I became a very different person because of it. Now, it's not necessarily like, I don't remember exactly what someone said, but like, they, like it was very lonely. Like, you feel very alone. And when you're growing up with siblings, it's also hard because like, I'm like the third wheel with my sisters. Like, yeah. I'm the youngest. They're definitely closer. Yeah. When we were living. Now we're like so close. Yeah. But like, you know, you always kind of feel like, I want to fit in, I want to fit in. Yeah. And I felt like that a lot when I was in school too because I went through the whole bullying thing. So, I feel like that was really hard. And I think that that's why, like, I, I carry a lot of that and I became a lot of, like, a people pleaser that, like, oh, like, if I if I, you know, am like, if I'm like really, really nice, then you'll like me more kind of thing. And I had to unlearn a lot of those things. And now I'm kind of at a point where I'm like, you like me, you like me, you don't like me, you don't like me. I don't really care. Like, mm -hmm. honestly speaking, but back in the day it was like, I just want everyone to like me. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that happened. What about you? Honestly, it was always about my weight. Yeah. Yeah. People just calling me like big, overweight. I had a lot of the that's bullying too. rough. And you know what else it was? Because I've mentioned the weight stuff before. Uh -huh. That's been a while. And it's still, it's still with me. I feel like I'm going to carry it for a very long time. Yeah. Something that I'm going to work, have to work through like really, uh -huh. and really. Mm -hmm. Um, But one time, and I can't remember where I was or what the situation was now, but somebody called me a dirty packy. Yeah. The way I would knock them out today. Today. Stop but it. the way that that Aruj, that version would just Aruj, probably put her head down. I was like, away. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay, avoid the conf Like, I don't want to con confront anyone. Yeah. Avoid conflict. Avoid. And in terms of flight or fight, I was always the flight. I get that. I you get know? That. It's like, a lot for someone to say that to you. It is. 
and I remember it was just like a, it was like a random rude m remark somewhere. And I just remember growing up, I've always been in terms of fight, flight, or freeze. I would flight. Yeah. Like I never wanted to have avoid it. Yeah. I just would avoid things. I didn't want to start a fight. I never wanted to like yell. Yeah. I was that. But now that's changing. It is. It, but you know what? I understand why you were like that. Yeah. Because you do have to be very careful too. Like sure. when someone says that to you, they're not stable. That's yeah. Stable. They're not stable or they're really uneducated and dumb. Yeah. Straight up. Real. Okay. So like in certain situations, you do have to walk away. Yeah. Because you're like, what if I engage and this person is a psychopath mm. and they're like throwing hands at me? Or what if there's Am a I weapon gonna, on hand? Right? Or, I don't know. You just don't know. Like yeah. you, know, you can't engage it all the time. So sometimes it's better to just leave because you're just like, what's the point of me engaging yeah. with you? Like it's not like your opinion's gonna change. You're an idiot. How yeah. am I gonna change your opinion? Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I, I get that. And there was also this whole like, and we haven't really touched on this yet. And I think maybe we will like maybe in a future episode. But this whole like idea of safety for like being a girl on the streets. That's a big one. It's a big one. That's you know, one. like how we carry ourselves, how we present ourselves, how our radar is always on, mm -hmm. you know, um, like even if I have headphones on and I'm walking down the street or whatever, Yo. the volume is low, low. I'm not going to lie that. Yeah. That's something I think about. Yeah. Because I need to be aware of my surroundings. Girl, I need to know who's around me, who's behind me, who's in front of me. Have I seen this car before yeah. that wasn't parked there before? Wow. You are literally me. Right. I do that. That's like I even at home, like I will always have like a game plan for like mm. somebody ever came. What are we doing? Yeah. Like sometimes I, I remember when I would like Emma was younger, I would actually like reenact things with her. So I was like, you know what to do. Yeah. Like, you got to have your kids prepared and it's hard when you're a girl i think that's one of the reasons why i ended up like going to the gym and like learning boxing and stuff because i was like i always want to know that like whatever i can do for myself that i make myself strong enough to like be a protector yeah because like you never know guys you always know. like make sure your your eyes are peeled always yeah yeah, that's and I feel so like maybe true. that's why I'm also like a runner. Yeah, because like maybe I I now that I'm deeping it right now because you want to be strong enough, you want to be fast. Yeah, and like if my response, is that yeah, if the trauma that I carry in terms of a situation growing up, I was always the person that would flee. Mm -hmm. I was the fight, flight, or freeze. Yeah. I'm flight, right? Yeah. So then I think maybe I picked up running to make sure that like in terms of safety in the back of my mind, I was like, at least I can be fast. If, yeah. If I'm not yeah. going to fight and if I'm not going to freeze, I'm a run. Yeah. Ooh. So let's pick that skill up. But isn't that crazy that like we think this, we way. do think this way. And I'm sure girls out there, like we think this way, cause this is a definite collective experience it's a collective because collective growing experience. up, like we, I was always taught like be aware. And like growing up, I didn't really have headphones. We yeah. didn't have like things that would blow. So I was hyper aware of yeah. stuff. Right. And always, it, it was always like, like, and I, I would always even have like the way I would carry my backpack. Yeah. I would have it where I would be able to like, if I had to throw it off, yeah. like, I had to like access my water bottle. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just certain things that certain skills that you pick up as a woman. Yeah. And yeah, I feel I'm like not going to be... lie like that, that well, everything you're saying is like spot on. Right. Because as a woman, you do have to be on guard. You do. Like even when I take when I took like classes for my private investigation course there was a lot of like stories that you would hear about like even witnessing a crime where like as a witness you're not even like legit because we don't perceive things properly mm. so a lot of the times when there's witnesses to a crime they'll say the guy was wearing a red jacket and his jacket could have been black because mm. we never pay attention so like for me i'm the same like if i see a car outside and that car has been there and someone's sitting there and I'm like, this is not my neighbor. Mm -hmm. I literally will write it down. Yeah. Like what's the make and the model. And there's actually, this is the most messed up story. I have to tell oh you. Oh my gosh. This. I was at my mom's house <clears throat> and I'm like sitting out, like I was sitting in my room and I was just like, you know, casually you like look outside your window or whatever. Right. And you're like, okay, like it's dark outside, whatever. Like there's a car sitting at the front. We had a knock at the door. <clears throat> okay. And it's like 11, 11 AM at night, COVID times. <clears throat> somebody knocks at the door and I'm like, I'm not answering the door. So like, uh, my brother goes, answers the door. There's this woman comes to the door and she's like, Oh God. Oh, I'm looking for so-and-so. And my brother's like, that person's not here. And she's like looking inside like this, like over my brother's shoulders. And he's like, what the flip? Yeah. He's like she's not, here. there's no one here. And he slams the door in her face. Yeah. Here he closed the door in her face. And then I'm like, that was shady. Like That's immediately, shady. immediately red flag. it was like red flag. Mm -hmm. So I'm like going upstairs and I'm like, 
this is shady to me. Mm -hmm. She's pacing our driveway, mm -hmm. okay? And then she's like looking at the car on the other side and they're having a conversation. No. I swear. And I'm like, this is shady. And I'm like, I don't want to be like the, you know, the one that's like quick to dial the police. But I'm like, my gut's telling me something's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I called the police. Okay. I'm on the phone with them. And like everyone else is thinking I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. okay, everybody, everybody, you're crazy. You're overthinking. Everyone's thinking I'm crazy. I'm on the phone. I'm like, hey, like there's this car mm -hmm. in front of my house. And like, it's really shady. Like they're talking to someone. I'm sitting there looking at the car like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is like dark. Okay. It's almost midnight now. I look past the car. There's someone sitting on the lawn. What? A, like it's a black shadow. Okay. There's a shadow. Someone is sitting on the lawn and I'm like, what? And this girl goes like, she, she goes from the side and she turns into like the street, like walking. She walks into the street on the side of our house. Okay. So I'm like still like looking, looking, looking. And then I'm on the phone and I'm like, yeah, something is definitely off. Like I'm telling you something's off. She's going into like other people's driveways coming out. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then the person on the phone is like, what's the make of the car? Mm -hmm. And girl, what do I know about cars? But I'm like, it's this and this and this. I'm like, I'm pretty sure. My brother's like, oh, there's no way. Like she has the right car. Like there's no, like there's no way. Okay. Okay. So I'm like, I'm like, no, it's the right car. Okay. And then I'm like, no, I'm telling you, this is the car. Like, yeah. this is the car. So I tell her what the car, th and she's like, hold on a second. And then she puts me on hold. And then she comes back and she's like, are you sure that's the car? And I'm like, yeah, that's the car. Like, that's the make and that's the color. That's the car. Okay. She is like, we're sending um, police officers right now. And then she's like, that's like a stolen vehicle. Okay. Oh. Just by the make of the car. Okay. And what I'm telling her, the way these cops rolled in, <gasps> fam, okay. This is my mom's street. Mm. One police car from here, one from here, big ass floodlights on, okay? This guy's jumping fences, okay? No, no lying, okay? Jump, he jumps a fence. The, they came this way, they grabbed the girl, okay? Oh. And then they figured, like, they, I didn't know that they grabbed him, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're like arresting and putting him in the car. And I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? Like, it was so bad. And then they're like, she's like to me, you know, we've been looking for this person for a really long time. Like, these guys are like, they literally go around, they try to like come into your house and like, no. I swear, okay? I panicked so hard oh my god like i was like oh my god this is crazy but like that's what happened and so i was like trust your gut always trust your trust your gut. gut you will know what's popping okay and i'm so glad that like i'm so glad i trusted yeah. them and I did that because i was like if my brother had not been home and it had been my parents mm -hmm. first of all i know that my dad would have opened the door mm -hmm. and been like hello how are you doing yeah and like he could have gone her. Mm -hmm. I'm like, thank God my brother opened the door that day. Like, honestly speak, thank God I was there that day. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, it's just like things like that. When like, these are things that you're like, you got to be self-aware. You got to be aware because the truth is women are built differently than men. Yeah. We are not as strong as they are. Let's not lie to ourselves. Mm -hmm. They can take you out. They can. Okay. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're always ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Scary story, but I had to share. No, but I, I was so in it. Girl, I was in that story. Thank you so much for sharing story that. story happened to me. A great storyteller, by the Thank way. I was like, I'm string all of it on your street. It was intense. So I took um, a really beginner, like self-defense class. Yeah. Um, and they're teaching you like campus safety and all these yeah. things. Yeah. And one of the things that one of those trainers said, yeah. which really resonated with me, one, he was like, women need to understand that you need to use your voice. Yeah. So he said to me, he was like, even though you may feel like you're not physically able to do anything. Yeah. He's like, imagine if you're in the middle of like young and Dundas. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, you're standing there and somebody's about to attack you. He's like, and imagine the crowd and everyone. But if you yell, yeah, that attention is all going like, where's yeah, that? Where's yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. Who's yeah. yelling? Who is yeah, yelling? Yeah. And he was like, when I mean use your voice, I mean use it to its greatest yeah. strength. One, I actually love that advice. It stuck with me since he said it. Wow. Two, he was like, a lot of um, women have a tendency to look at certain things that can be changed. Yeah. So he's like, if you if you are a victim or, yeah. or if you are a witness, sorry, yeah. and you are being questioned by the police and you're like, oh, the person is wearing a red jacket. Yeah. And they're like, no, the person actually wasn't. He's like, people can change their jackets. Yeah. People can change their yeah. shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look at shoes. Don't look at jackets. Yeah. Eyes. Yeah. Any facial like features 
pictures that yep. you can see. A mole here. Yeah. Hair color tattoos. here. Tattoos. Tattoos here. Piercings. He was like, look at things that you really know that within a 20, 30 minute time span, nobody can change. Yeah. And I didn't think of it that way because honestly, initially I was like, oh, maybe you should always notice people's shoes. Yeah. But yeah, people can take their shoes off. Yeah, for sure, yeah. girl. People are going to change their jackets. So really think of things that he was, and it was great advice. So those were two things that really stuck and with me. And the other is actually. like, scratch them because their DNA gets under your fingernail. Ooh. That's a good one. A lot of people, DNA is a big thing, guys. Okay. Like, it's a really big thing. So if they're in the in their DNA bank or whatever it's called, then, yeah. then you can match someone's DNA with what's under your All right. fingernails. This turned into like a criminal mind right? episode. I love it. It's scary to talk about. I hope no one ever goes through. I know. Honestly speaking. I know. But um. But I think we're also as moms, like that anxiety runs through you. The and wait with your kids. Ooh. When you're in a store and mm -hmm. you don't see one for two seconds, the way I'm running around. Oh, same. Like, same. my daughter's like, I'm like, you ain't leaving my sight. Yeah. Don't think about going into the other aisle. You're not going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going nowhere. So it's always important to, like, just be hyper aware, you know, and teach those skills to your kids, too. Yeah. Like, street safety is a huge thing. Be street smart. Make your kids street smart. I actually have one last question for you. What's up? And I think this is a big question. Let's do it. Would you let your kids go to sleepovers? No. I didn't even need to think about it no for me no it's a it's no a for hell me. no for me yeah guys you know what i just it's a scary world out there we clearly have been talking yeah, about it yeah. and i am just not comfortable yeah with that i feel like you have friends and that's great and keep it to a certain limit yeah but i really do want to teach my kids kind of like boundary setting totally and also i just don't know who's in the other home absolutely absolutely you know like and a lot of people like have their basement rented out for example or like they have aunts and uncles that live with them extended family you have somebody visiting from another yeah. country older just, brothers that have friends coming over you just never you never know. know your sister's boyfriend you just you just never know never know it's not happening there's actually a school um in the gta where something like that happened no where way. one of the camp instructors was do, like assaulting little kids this past summer so like i feel like be aware be oh. very aware and protect your kids because i think like for me that's a very a very big thing where it's like i don't need temporary happiness for my child no way and like the trauma of something happening i would rather deal with you not being happy with your mom mm -hmm. for a day or two or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. oh my mom doesn't let me do anything i'll deal i'll, I'll deal, deal with that, that too okay with that Same. it's fine if i can protect you and save you from something i'll deal yeah i understand that like when you're young the joy of it i I get it. I get it. We I were get there, it. guys. I get it. I there. did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think my mom, for my parents, it was very much maybe not the whole thing of like, like sexual assault. Mm -hmm. It was just protection. I think for us, we're a little bit more educated and for everything that I've read, you know, like I, I just sent something to my picture, uh, my sisters where like there was a, a girl and I mean, I don't, every, don't believe everything, everything you hear on TikTok, but she was basically saying that her dad worked in the special victims unit. Okay. And one of his biggest tips was don't send your kids to sleepovers and don't send them to summer camps and don't let your kids go to public bathrooms without you or another parent. Oh, whoa. don't do it. Cause you don't know what's happening in there. And honest to God, I could never do it. Like, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm talking the big talk, you know, when my kids get older, we'll see. But yeah. like, I think right now where I'm at, it's like a hell no. And I think I can, I think most importantly, you talk to your kids about it and you explain it to them. And that's the thing. I feel like the frustration when we were kids is that I never actually really understood the why. Yeah. It was always just a no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that if we can have open conversations with our kids and we let them know that this is what it is. Yeah. If you still want to be upset, even after the reason that I've yeah. provided cool and then I can deal with that yeah and you can also like change the narrative for them as well in the sense of like okay you know like they want to do a sleepover well I mean do they want to come to your house mm. right and like maybe not a sleepover but you guys can like come over and like you know stay a little later than usual yeah. like I'm I'm okay with that I'm okay with like hosting fun parties for my kids I'm okay with all that mm -hmm. but I have a limit of course my same. limit is not gonna change same I don't care how much your child begs begs me please please it's it's not happening yeah I can't I I think I just as a parent like you want to do everything you can to protect your for kids sure. and I honestly hope that like we are definitely like we are a much more educated generation and i hope to god that these small tools help us with our kids honestly, i really do honestly but yeah it's a no for me girl it's a no for me girl it's a no <laughs>
I and already on see. that note, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. If you're still with us, we appreciate you. Yeah, we just go off. Yeah, uh, thank you for following us on our tangent journey. Thank you for the questions. Yeah, you go, your questions love are amazing. The questions. I really love the questions. Yeah, me too. I feel like we went very deep this time around. You know, a lot. And yeah. hey, part one, part two, part one, part two. It's been going. Should we do a part three, part four? No, it probably <laughs> will happen. It probably will happen for sure. Um, we hope that you got a chance to get to know us a little bit better you can clearly tell our personalities through our stories um but if you guys have more questions send them our way because this could be a recurring thing for sure and i think it should be because as you guys get to know us more that you might have different questions about like you know just things in general yeah right? and we're in a different journey in life and like things are always changing so there's always new things happening and whatnot mm -hmm. um so that would be kind of fun that's right. fun to do make sure you guys hit that subscribe button like we always tell you please sorry we say it all the time we got to remind you yeah we gotta, we gotta remind you. you as as i've said before we usually share questions on our instagram story mm -hmm. linked below is our instagram our tiktok um and make sure you guys give us a five star rating on spotify yes please and obviously you can put all your comments under youtube as well so mm -hmm. share away we love engaging with you guys we love talking to you guys and we will see you guys next time see you bye later. guys